downtown Manhattan. It's a long way from Conception Harbor, Newfoundland, but it's the men of Conception Harbor who helped build this town. All a bunch of fish, call them cowboys of the skies, brother, call them what you wish. If the measure of a man is in the things he leaves behind, I'll take an iron working man every time. If you walk by the new tower they're building at the World Trade Center and look up, chances are that many of those hard hats belong to Newfoundlanders. For generations, Newfoundland sons followed their fathers into boats to fish the North Atlantic. But Newfoundlanders have established another tradition. For generations, the Kellys, the Doyles, the Sullivans, the Costellos have followed their fathers hundreds of feet into the sky over the city of New York to work high steel. At the top of the third tower of the World Trade Center, the fish gang is preparing to raise Derek A. Newfoundlander Willie Quinlan yells instructions as 22 tons of steel is jacked up two stories. John Costello is doing what his great-grandfather did 80 years ago. If there's an iron-working dynasty, it is the Costello family. There's been a long history of Costellos in New York, and they've all, especially the ones that are working in the city now, are all very well known and very good workers. And I came into the business about five years ago, and my father had a very good name in the business and was well liked, as well as my uncles. And, you know, it meant a lot to me to, to be a good worker and to, you know, prove that I belong. Up in the 110-foot mast is John's cousin, Jerry. He's one of six Costellos on the site, and like the others, has always assumed he would be part of this elite raising gang. These are the men who drive the building higher into the sky. They get the glory, the money, and burn out the fastest. How dangerous is it? They say everybody falls once. It's just a matter of how far you, like I know my father fell, I guess Willie fell, I guess I, you know, an average, I guess it's just, everybody gets hurt at least once, I guess. It's just how, you know, how hurt you get. I mean, this, we are, how high up are we? 32 stories. It doesn't feel that high. No, it doesn't. Did you work up there on the... Yeah, me and Willie worked there. It was 16 years ago, and the World Trade Center was Jerry Costello's first job. He lied about his age to get it. There he was, a 17-year-old kid and perched on a beam 60 stories in the air. Costello's grandfather would never have imagined it. He was a fisherman back in Conception Harbor, and like other Newfoundland fishermen in the 20s, he was having a hard time supporting his family. When the fisheries failed, it was stay and starve or find work elsewhere. Navigating their way through the bustle of New York in the Jazz Age proved to be more difficult than finding a job. New York was in the middle of a building boom, and it needed workers. It was easy enough work to get into. The only requirements were good balance and lots of nerve. Compared to the long days and harsh seas they were used to, this work was not bad, and the wages were good. The Newfoundlanders stayed and moved into the brownstones of Brooklyn. Where all the old fellows we used to know. That's all, right. All gone. Gone. There's only the two of us left. Pat Healy and Mickey Joy are still there. They left the Newfoundland outports of Avondale and Bonavista Bay after World War I. Now in their 80s, they have retired from a line of work they say was ideally suited to the Newfoundland temperament. We didn't, couldn't stay in the factory if you changed us into it. We liked the outdoors, and of course, the higher we went, the better we yeah, were. Yeah, that's right. And then on the buildings alongside, were a lot of pretty stenographers and everything in there, you know. Oh, well, nice. I see they, it. They, they it all go to the windows, they fight with each other to get out. Make hey. a day to cross, cross the street. <laughs> Today would be different, different, I guess. Today is different. Was, Today is different. You it like was dog eat dog, dog those days, rawhide. Men couldn't do enough. Well, how has the industry changed? No. The guys work like oh, this Oh, no, they don't work like that today. And then again, you have more power tools today. That's right. Things, see, where a lot of things had to be done by hand. Bullwork used to call this bullwork. <laughs> Danny Doyle, one of 26 Newfoundlanders on this site, would tell you it's still a tough job for which you need plenty of brute force. Watch your head. What's the okay, order? How is, does the building come okay, up? Okay, this is basically the raising game. Uh -huh. Our job basically is to set iron. 
And to do that, Danny works the bull stick, which maneuvers seven ton steel columns into place. Then the men known as connectors bolt them together. They're Newfoundlanders too. And the Canadian connection goes further. The steel they are setting is Canadian manufactured. And it's a Canadian construction company building this 48 story tower. Okay, the work you're doing, how do you communicate? How do you know where to put that, that beam? Oh, you just know. After a while, you know the iron. Knowing the iron requires careful teamwork and split-second timing. This steel girder is being raised by a derrick operator stationed 10 floors below. There she goes. A bellman on the working deck communicates with him through a series of bells and lights to jockey the girder toward a connector standing on a foot-wide beam. He grabs a ton of steel and secures it with a single bolt. It seems to me, Danny, that those guys who are out there have got to trust you a heck of a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? I mean, it's my job that I have to watch them all the time because, they're, you know, they're connecting the beast. I can only give it to them. You can see my fellow workers are just so enthused in my uh, interview with all of you. Being an iron worker is a combination of brawn and beer. Buildings to put up and an image to keep up. You know, this is an act. you got to put this on in order to be a steel worker, right? This... So, yeah, walk around like this. Yeah, yeah, get to yeah. walk around. Yeah. You, this is yeah. part of the deal? Oh, sure, and sometimes down the street you hear them whistling at the all the girls. Now, if you put, took their hat off and put their break street clothes on, they'd never seen nothing. Well, if the girl turned around and said something back to them, they'd probably just pass right out, you know. But... You need that for courage to walk on the ice. Here comes an ice girl. Why don't you go for it, huh? Wow, look at that. Hey, y'all, Adam, I'm not y'all. Oh, okay. Look that animal. Take it. That, yes. They say that when God created the iron workers, he created a superior race of man, and then he invented whiskey and evened it all up. <laughs> Ray Corbett runs Local 40 of the Iron Workers Union. 300 of its 1,200 members are fish. Why do you call it yourself fish? Well, that was something that derived, of course, from the Newfoundlanders that came here. All hardy, God-fearing workers seem to uh, fear they have no fear for anything. But there was a lot to fear in the 1920s. Without hard hats, safety belts, and temporary floors, workers weren't expected to last more than eight years before being seriously injured or killed. The most dreaded jobs were on the bridges. They took the most lives. On each bridge, we were losing four, five, six. The Triborough Bridge in New York, we had lost 12. Uh, only one that fell on that bridge survived. In the early 60s, they were building what was to be the eighth wonder of the world, the Verrazano Bridge, linking Brooklyn and Staten Island. It was a mile-long high wire act without a safety net. Three men fell to their deaths. When Ray Corbett demanded that a catch net be installed, the company refused. Corbett led 300 iron workers off that job. The nets went up two weeks later. They saved six lives. Mickey Joy worked on the Verrazano. He's one of the lucky ones. 40 years of walking iron and never injured. There's a church down there, St. Thomas's, and I go down on the subway. I never passed there a morning that I didn't bless myself and say that contrition to God to guide me. And I never came home in the evening that I didn't bless myself and thank him for bringing me back home. Pat Healy wasn't that lucky. Once, when trying to clear a rope that got tangled in a motor, he got his hand caught. And a brand new pair of gloves, leather gloves, tore it, the, the thumb out of the glove and the thumb off the hand and the cord that goes up here attached to the arm that controls the movement of the thumb, that came too. This will never be a safe job. Accidents go with the territory. So far, there have been 10 on this site. But even a seven-ton column swinging in a 35-mile-an-hour wind doesn't stop the fish gang. Pushing them is Willie Quinlan. He was off four years after a fall broke his back, legs, and arms. But he's working again. 
John Costello is also back after breaking his leg on this job. He's luckier than his two cousins who got out after falling three stories. This is still a risky business, especially when the weather's bad. 37 days have already been lost on this job. So they keep going, because when they lose days, everyone loses money. After work over at Brady's Bar, they explain it's the only way to survive. Has it ever happened that a combination of weather, danger, or a feeling in your gut saying today may be the day and you just don't go? Did you yep, have a bad yep. feeling? Yeah, you always go. Whether you have a bad feeling or not. But you have that a couple of times a week. You do? Yeah. Sure. Are you out all night? Out all night, probably, or Wednesday. When you're out all night, and you come in in the morning, that first step feels like you, oh, 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 wait a minute. After a while, it wears off. Why did you get into it in the first place? Why are you doing this for a living? Why did you get into it in the first place? Why are you doing this for a living? Money, 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 money. Bottom line? Yeah, bottom line. It's that bottom line that bought Jerry Costello this home on Staten Island. His wife, Teresa, and three kids live comfortably on the $40,000 a year he brings home. Are you going to be a night worker, Mom? You're, no, you're not. You're going to go up on that high steel with Daddy and walk no, up I'm very, not. very high? Don't ask me, I'm not. You are? I thought you were going to be a garbage man. Have you ever been I up there? No, no, I won't go up. I'm afraid of heights. What? I'm afraid of heights, so I wouldn't go up. He wants to take me to the top of the Trade Center. I won't even go. So why, Jerry, why is this such, such a good relationship? How come it works? Uh, because I guess she don't care. And I, <laughs> I do yeah. so. you know. No, no she, have, she has nothing to do with, you know, when I go to work. I guess it's just like being married to a cop. Yes, I would equate it you with You know, that. like, he goes to work, you know, someday he could be shot or something like that. I keep hearing about tradition, the, the iron working tradition, the Newfoundland tradition. Does all of that spill over into your family life, into your private life? Well, there's a party in my house. All the, the wives all go in the kitchen, and the husbands go into the living room, and they build the buildings, and they drink, and the wives serve them. You're an American. You were born here. You grew up here. You sound like one. Okay. I know. Do you think of yourself as a Newfoundlander? Yeah, I say yeah. I'd say a part of his heart is a Newfoundlander. Yeah, when they say, "Are you?" I say, "Oh yeah, my mother and father." I say, "I'm born here, but my mother and father were both born before Canada." Yeah. Did you ever think of going home? At any point, oh, you say? Oh, yes, I went, we went home. You mean to go home to stay? No, not to go down. No, no not to know. I wasn't thank tired. God, of, thank I God. Mean, uh, now I got nothing against it, don't you understand? But the conditions are so different there. Yeah. And where I came from, there's absolutely no no improvement whatsoever. No light, no light the whatever. Yeah. Lamps. yeah, I think yeah. they have got electric light there now. Things have changed in Conception Harbor since Pat and Mickey left 60 years ago. But not much. The pace is pretty relaxed. Most of the 2,600 people in the area do a little farming, a little fishing, and a little reminiscing. 86-year-old Martin Kennedy has a lot to remember. He spent 40 years working high steel all over the United States, coming home to his wife Frances and their seven kids every Christmas. When he retired 25 years ago, he came home for good. In all the time you worked, why did you come home? Why didn't you stay in New York or Pittsburgh or Chicago? Well, it's all right when you're working. All right there when you're working. But uh, when you get uh, retires, ain't no place like here. <laughs> in a corner of the living room, there's an eerie reminder of Martin's early days in New York, a shrine to his kid brother, Ned, who died in 1929 while working on the Manhattan Bank. What about your two boys, Mark and John? Mark Mar fell. John, John died. John died in the hospital. Their son, Mart, was 26 when he died in California. He fell 10 feet and a piece of iron punctured his heart. What is it that you like about this business? It killed your brother? It killed I, I your son? I saw him go up on a, on a, on a, on a 50-story building today. Then they take an old boat and go over here in the bay fishing. Because if you broke down out there, you, were, you drive away, you were lost. You got a chance you get up on a building. When you walked off that last building, how did you feel? That was it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> were you sorry? No, no, it's sorry. No. <laughs> no. 
there are still a lot of iron workers in Conception Harbor, 450 in the local union, but there aren't any skyscrapers to build, so young men still leave for the city, as their great-grandfathers did before them. Billy Costello is marrying Lori Mitchell at the Fox Hollow Inn on Long Island. After 60 years, the Costellos of Conception Harbor have landed in Middle America. They are as much a clan today as they ever were, and although they celebrate their roots, they don't want to go back. There's more dogs around here, but you probably check an hour and I'm following it. And the fathers don't want the sons to follow in their footsteps any longer. Perhaps ironworking is in the blood, because Billy, who is an electrical engineer, wants to be an ironworker. His brother John went through university on a scholarship, but he chooses to work on the top of the World Trade Center. I don't know, I think my father wanted his generation to be the last generation because he doesn't really care for me being in this business too much, especially since I finished college. He wants me to get out into the uh, executive world or whatever. But I enjoy doing this work a lot and I'm making good money, so I'm going to stick with it for a while. Are you starting a different generation, another generation? Yeah. You can't... Mark, no. your son is no. going to be a... No. No. Still working? No. No. Right? No. He, she would never have it either. You know when no, you love it? You love it when you're 17 years old. The summer, you can say, oh, okay, that's it. Take off the whole summer. And it's a boys' club. That's it. And all yes. the friends are there, and you go out yes. drinking every single night, and you could... It's a big party, one yes. big party. Mm -hmm. That's when it's fun. And that's when I, I loved it the most. Now it's all work. You don't have a sense now as you travel the city that Pat Healy had something to do with this. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, and I say it this way. There's a building there with some skin over my leg is on a jet. Anytime I ride with my grandchildren now, in fact, they call it the Twin Towers. This is, this is a grandpa's building. That's grandpa's job. Yeah. yeah. They point out the buildings to me yeah. right through. 